You may not know this man, but you definitely heard of this homegrown building material specialist that made its debut on Busan, Malaysia in 2016. He is the man behind Chimhin Group Bahar. He has been very active in the market since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, having been involved in merger and acquisition of at least five listed companies over the span of two years. So what's brewing? Hi, I'm Frankie. Welcome back to my fuck show. Today, I want to talk about Datuk Seri Chao Beng Tek, who seems to have a Midas touch on the stocks he buys, and try to observe if we could get a hint of his master game plan ahead. 2022 has been a challenging year. Market crash, looming recession. But with the right knowledge and skills, you can turn this crash into cash, if you know what I mean. Just like Warren Buffett said, when people are fearful, you should be greedy. Join us on either the 10th or 11th of June, where we will share with you how to invest in the stock market and choose the right assets that fit you best. You can find the link in the description below. Now, back to the video. The story started in May 2020. At that time, glove stocks were hot. I'm sure many of you tasted blood with the gains generated by the big four in the glove business. Very soon, it came to a point that not just glove manufacturing companies, but any announcement about the intention of starting a glove manufacturing plant would draw investors' money and push share price up to new high. It was during this time, Chin Hin's boss started to come under the limelight when he acquired more than 13% stake in rubber racks. Investors quickly got excited about the news, which I'm not sure why since Chow seems to have little experience about glove manufacturing coming from a building material trading background. Anyways, rubber racks share price got a booster from the market and went all the way up to a new record high of 257 ringgit, making him sitting on paper gain of multiple times his initial investment in the company in a span of less than six months. Soon after that, the news came up with another story that Chow has emerged as a substantial shareholder in Saudi Group Berhad after acquiring a 5% stake in the company in the open market. Saudi Group is a company that specializes in making frozen processed food products such as burger patties, nuggets, sausages, meatballs and many others which retail under the brand name Saudi Gold and Farms Gold. Fundamentally speaking, since 2018, the financial performance of Saudi had not been satisfactory and that had been reflected in his downward trend in its share price. In fact, it was so low that many investors thought there's little hope for the share price to turn around again. And prior to the story reported by the news, you know what happened. Just look at the chart. So straightforward and sweet. Assuming the acquisition was at 40 cent per share, Chow would be sitting on a paper gain of over 60% at the peak of Saudi's share price. If Dato Seri Chow has such a Midas start, why didn't he show off his power in the past? Actually, it did, but in a low profile manner. Remember Solar Vest? Before the glove hike, it was all about investment in solar energy. The government had already dished out three large scale solar projects before that, and many people expect LSS456 all the way to infinity in the future. Therefore, when Solar West offered its IPO back in late 2019, it was a blockbuster event for a lot of investors. Eh, so how did Chow came into the picture? Ah, prior to Solar West, IPO, Chin Hin was already an early investor of the company with 45% stake back in 2017. Apparently, Chin Hin's investments cost was less than 20 cents per share. So just imagine how much paper gain the group was sitting on based on SolarWest IPO price of 35 cents per share. Soon after the debut, Chin Hin disposed of 6.4% stake in SolarWest and recorded an one-off gain of 28 million ringgit for the group. This was a good move by Chin Hin because all of his business divisions sank into the red as a result of plant shutdowns and reduced activity thanks to the MCO. The group would have recorded a loss of 20 million ringgit if they didn't realize their gains from solar vests. And finally, in May this year, Chin Hin sold off all its remaining 19% shares in solar vests to a company called Divine Inventions and Yer Merha at 80 cent per share. Again, this divestment enabled Chin Hin to record another potential one-off gain of 36 million ringgit. Such great investment, right? And you think the story ends there? No, no, no. Divine Invention Sandram Brahat is a company owned by Datuk Sri Chao Beng Tek himself. So he probably has bigger plans for the company ahead for him to take on such risks to acquire SolarWest directly under his private company instead of sharing it with the shareholders of 
Shin Hin Group. As a building materials specialist, it wouldn't make much sense if all these corporate exercises didn't involve a business that is within Shin Hin's forte. March 2022, Shin Hin Group Berhad has emerged as the single largest shareholder of building material manufacturer Ajia Berhad with close to 25% equity interest for 104 million ringgit. It didn't stop there. Today, Shin Hin has increased its shareholding in Ajia to 32% already. Finally, this is a synergistic acquisition that would help the group expand its product range from building materials into high-value added safety glass products, metal roofing, metal door and window frames. Bear in mind that this is Chin Hin's biggest bet since its IPO in 2016. So they must know pretty well what they want to do with Ajia. In fact, this exercise had caused the founding member of Ajia Group, Dato Chan Wa Kiang, to resign as the MD of Ajia following Chin Hin's acquisition. This will allow Chin Hin to insert its leadership into Ajia to drive the company to the direction that Chin Hin and Chao want it to be. Looks like Chao is on fire and Feng Shui must be working really well for him. So why stop? Divine Inventions, the private arm of Dato Sri Chao, is back in action recently. By now, you should be quite familiar with the modest operandi of his investment strategy. First of all, let me share with you the background of the next story. We all know how bad poultry stocks are doing at the moment. If you wish to know the full story about that, check out this video over here. Long story short, in April 2022, Loss Making LTKM proposed to divest its existing business back to its holding company, LTK and Grand for 159 million ringgit cash. Perhaps it's better that way so that the owners of the poultry company can manage business operations with more flexibility during this difficult time. But then, this exercise has raised eyebrows among investors because not only the management decided to leave the stock to retain its listing status, it proposed to venture into electronic manufacturing services. Eh, hey, you think a stock can simply change its business direction one? Ah? Must get approval from Bursa and shareholders one, okay? This move involved a total of seven proposals, a 55-page long PDF document to make way for a reverse takeover by a company called Local Assemblies and Grand Berhad, a little-known EMS firm based in Johor. The point that is worth mentioning here is that Dato Sri Chao Beng Te, founder of main market listed building material specialist Chin Hin Group Berhad, has a 20% stake in local assembly via his private entity Divine Inventions. Did you see that coming? No, right? The saying goes, quiet dogs are the fiercest dog. Like that lah. There are so many more examples of the men in action in the stock market, such as the acquisition of Signature Kitchen and the most recent one, Yama Holdings Berhad. It seems that there's a chance that Chow is on a mission to consolidate all these companies to be a big business empire like what we have discussed before in the past. Or it could be that he simply has a good grasp of various investment teams in the market and time his entries all at the right time. Whatever it is, the takeaway here is not about bragging how others are doing, but to know how to invest your money your way and be confident with it with the assumption that you know what you're doing. Lah. That's all we have for today. Hashtag fuck.